so welcome back. I'm Alan Jay and welcome to Lincoln Central with your 10th trig tutorial in the basic trig series. Today we'll be looking at the Pythagoras theorem again. This time we'll look at another proof. We'll also learn about special right angle triangles called triples that have whole number sides. And we end up doing a couple of problems, harder ones this time, about objects in 3D. And hopefully that will knock this topic on the head. And so to a different proof. The rationale behind this is to get some logical thinking going. But the proof also introduces a very interesting concept, similar triangles. Now similar triangles, or triangle similarity as it's sometimes called, goes hand in hand with congruency. But there is a big difference. When triangles are similar, they have the same shape, but have different sizes. Congruent triangles are identical. They are the same size. Look at this graphic and you'll see what I mean. When two triangles are congruent, they are exactly the same in shape and dimension. So side AB equals side DE, BC is equal to EF, and CA equals FD. And the ratio of corresponding sides is always 1. Now if two triangles are similar, the ratio of corresponding sides gives the same number. But this number is not 1. The number is sometimes called the scale factor. So in the diagram, the ratio of sides GI to AC equals the ratio of side GH to AB, which equals the side HI to BC, which equals the scale factor. So if GI is 15 centimeters and AC is 5 centimeters, the scale factor is 3. As you would expect, if you have a ratio of adjacent two sides within one triangle, in the similar triangle, the ratio of the corresponding sides gives the same ratio. So in our diagram, the ratio of the pink side to the blue side in triangle ABC is the same as the ratio of the pink side to the blue side in the larger, similar triangle, GHI. We'll be using this concept next. Oh, and before I forget, there are symbols to describe whether two triangles are congruent or similar. Three horizontal lines between triangles means they are congruent. A horizontal squiggle or three vertical lines means they are similar. Okay, so let's do it. The similar triangles proof of the Pythagoras theorem. We start with a right angle triangle ABC on the left, with the right angle at C. A perpendicular line from C meets the line AB at D. The two angles represented by the red and blue dots at B and A are complementary, that is, they add up to 90 degrees. So you can see we now have three triangles, triangle ABC that we started with, and triangles BCD and ACD. These triangles are all similar to each other, they have all three angles in common. Looking at the triangles separated and rotated, we can easily compare them. Remembering that the ratio of corresponding sides gives the same number, for triangles ABC and BCD, the first two separated triangles, BC over AB on triangle ABC, the ratio of green to purple sides equals BD over BC, the ratio of green to purple sides on triangle BCD. Likewise for triangles ABC and ACD. AC over AB on triangle ABC, the ratio of yellow to purple sides, equals AD over AC, the ratio of yellow to purple sides on triangle BCD. Looking at the first set of ratios and cross multiplying, we get BC squared equals AB times BD. Repeating for the second set of ratios, AC squared equals AB times AD. Taking these two equations to the next screen and adding them, we get BC squared plus AC squared equals AB times BD plus AB times AD. Factorising the right hand side by taking AB outside the brackets, BC squared plus AC squared equals AB bracket BD plus AD close bracket. But from before, remember side AB was bisected at D. AB equals BD plus AD. So the right hand side of the equation becomes AB times AB, that is AB squared. Now we have BC squared plus AC squared equals AB squared. 
simplifying the geometry by making side BC as little a, AC as little b, and AB as little c, we have a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Voila! Pythagoras theorem QED. And now to those special right angled triangles. As I mentioned in the introduction, what makes them special is that their sides are integral, that is, whole numbers. These triangles are called triples or triplets. Now you don't need to memorize all of them. Well, you couldn't if you tried. There are just too many. An infinite number as a matter of fact, but in mathematics it is sometimes useful to know some of them. Anyway, here's a list of the first 16 where the hypotenuse is less than 100. I'd suggest maybe learning the first four, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17. Believe it or not, there is an equation to predict triples called Euclid's formula. However, pressures of time and complexity mean we won't be visiting it today. And now to the problems. Problem number one. A box measures 45 centimetres wide by 90 centimetres long by 80 centimetres high. Calculate the diagonal through the box from any bottom corner to its opposite top corner. Answer to two decimal places. Label the corners of the box A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. The required diagonal is B, H. In triangle F, G, H, shaded grey, FH squared equals 45 squared plus 90 squared. In triangle BFH shaded green, BH squared equals FH squared plus BF squared, which equals 45 squared plus 90 squared plus 80 squared, which equals 2025 plus 8100 plus 6400, which gives us 16,525. Hence, BH equals the square root of 16,525, which equals 128.5496. So our answer is the diagonal through the box equals 128.55 centimetres to two decimal places. Problem number two. A square base pyramid of size 60 centimetres has equal slanting sides of length 70 centimetres. Calculate the height of the pyramid. Answer to two decimal places. First name the vertices of the pyramid A, B, C, D, E. Name the intersection of the base diagonals point F. The height is the line E, F. In triangle B, C, D, B, D squared equals 60 squared plus 60 squared, which equals 3,600 plus 3,600, which equals 7,200. So BD equals square root of 7,200. BF equals half of BD, which equals the square root of 7,200 divided by 2. In triangle BFE, EF squared plus BF squared equals 70 squared. So EF squared equals 70 squared minus BF squared. EF squared equals 4,900 minus 7,200 divided by 4, which gives us 4,900 minus 1,800, which equals 3,100. So EF is the square root of 3,100, which equals 55.676. So the answer is the height of the pyramid is 55.68 centimetres to two decimal places. And that's it. Thank you all for watching this tutorial. The next one is on the sine ratio. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss the latest vid. See you soon.